Google's Gemini 2.0. Is this thing the digital butler we always wanted? Or is it like the HAL 9000 we were warned about? Yeah, good question. So Google has kind of been playing catch up, right? In this whole AI race that's been going on. Yeah, it feels like everyone's trying to like one up each other. Exactly. And Gemini 1.0, you know, it was impressive, but it wasn't like mind blowing. You know what I mean? Yeah. But with 2.0, they're claiming it's a generational leap. It's like a... Uh, a big jump. Huge. Bold statement. So what's driving this hype? What's changed? Right. It's like they went from, I don't know, zero to 60 in like a, a self-driving Tesla. Yeah. So, okay, Gemini 1.0 was good at understanding all these different kinds of input, mm -hmm. right? Like text, images, audio, all that stuff. That's what they call multimodality. Right. But 2.0, this is where it gets uh, a little scary. A little bit, yeah. It doesn't just understand it. It can, like, create stuff. Like, imagine talking to your AI and it just whips up a slideshow yeah. in the middle of your conversation. Yeah. Kind of wild, right? Yeah, and that's what has everyone excited, that multimodal output. And, you know, from what I've seen, the examples are, they're impressive. Like, legitimately impressive. Yeah. But the question is, you know, how good is it really? Can AI, you know, generated content really compete with? like what humans can do. Yeah. And the articles we read actually had some some interesting thoughts on that. Okay, well let's uh let's get into that then cuz this is where things get really interesting. Gemini 2.0 isn't just like watching and listening. Right. It's a tool user. Yeah. Like you can use Google search, execute code, even integrate with your own apps. That's a big one. Yeah. Think about the possibilities, right? Like AI that's handling, you know, your entire workflow. From doing research to actually executing tasks. Yeah. But, you know, like with any powerful tool, there's there's always that potential for, you know, misuse. Yeah, that's a good point. And the articles did mention some early safeguards that they're, they're putting in place, but uh, it's definitely a work in progress. So speaking of potential, mm -hmm. uh, let's talk about this agentic era that mm -hmm. they keep bringing up. Sounds like something out of like a Philip K. Dick novel or something. Okay. Right. Like little sci fi. Yeah, and it's it's basically this idea that Gemini is moving beyond just being like a, a reactive tool. You know, you ask it a question, it gives you an answer. Yeah. It's becoming more of a proactive partner. Less, hey, what's the weather like? More, I noticed you're running low on coffee. Should I order some? You know? Yeah, it's like anticipating your needs. Exactly. Okay, that's pretty cool. Hey, want our free AI dope top AI tools that we use? Chat below. It's our live Google Sheets packed with over 100 killer tools, video, music, photos, AI voices, productivity, script writing, YouTube hacks, captions, the works, always growing, live Google Sheet, always free, AI, dope top AI tools that we use. Download and chat below. Back to the show. One thing that I thought was really interesting was the way Gemini interacts with other tools like Google Lens and Google Maps. Okay. You know, it's like it's starting to blur those lines between, you know, the digital world and the real world, which is which is both exciting and a little, you know, freaky, a little freaky. Yeah. Yeah. And Google isn't just, you know, talking about all this stuff. They're actually building it. Hmm. They've got some pretty ambitious prototypes going on, like Project Astra, which is basically like your personal AI assistant on steroids, on steroids. It speaks multiple languages, uses tools like a pro, and it responds like faster than you can blink. Yeah, the the near human response times they're claiming for Astra are, are pretty impressive, to be honest. It's uh, and it's all thanks to its native audio understanding. So is this the end of smartphones then? Maybe, maybe. Then there's Project Mariner. This yeah. is like your AI co-pilot, but for the internet. Yeah. It can analyze your screen, help you navigate websites, even complete tasks for you. Mm -hmm. They're saying it has an 83.5% success rate on like some pretty tough benchmarks. Which is impressive. Don't get me wrong. 83.5%. That's that's good. Yeah. But what about that other 16.5%? Yeah. What's it struggling with? What's it getting wrong? Yeah, the stuff it's failing at. Exactly. And that's that's where it gets, you know, that's where you start to see the cracks in the facade a little bit. And mm. it makes you think, right, about how much trust we're putting into these systems. Totally. Okay, so for all the coders out there listening to this, uh, get ready. Because Project Jules is uh, 
Yeah, it's wild. Straight out of science fiction. Imagine an AI working in the background, just automatically fixing bugs in your code, yeah. cleaning things up. Yeah, it's like having a, a super powered code editor that's, that's you know, constantly making your code better. It's like magic almost. Yeah. Ugh. But it also raises some interesting questions, right? Like yeah, what yeah. happens to, to human programmers? Yeah, are they out of a job? Exactly. You know, are we creating a future where, where AI replaces human programmers? And the articles, uh, they did touch on that a little bit the potential impact on the job market. Yeah, it's definitely something to, to think about. Absolutely, yeah, it's a yeah. valid concern. Automation, you know, it's always been disrupting industries. Yeah. And AI is, you know, it's just the latest wave of that. Mm. But uh, maybe instead of, you know, fearing it, we should be thinking about how we adapt. Right, like how do we uh, evolve alongside this stuff? Exactly. So the articles, you know, they paint a, a, a pretty optimistic picture, right, of like, Gemini's impact on the world. Yeah, they're definitely leaning into the positive. Increased productivity, yeah. a surge in, in creativity, yeah. greater accessibility for everyone. Yeah, all the good stuff. Sounds pretty good. It does, but um, it's easy to get you know swept up in all the hype. Sure. We can't forget about the other side of the coin, right? Yeah, the, the downsides, the stuff they maybe glossed over a little bit. Exactly, like job displacement. That's a real concern. Definitely. And then there's the whole issue of of bias creeping into these systems. Right. We're basically teaching AI, you know, based on our own data. Which isn't uh, perfect. Which is inherently flawed. Right, so. yeah. As these AI systems, you know, become more integrated into our lives, like those biases, the consequences, they get bigger. Yeah, the stakes get higher. It's not just about the tech itself. It's about how we, how we use it, how we control it. Absolutely. Yeah. You know, we need to be having these conversations yeah. about, you know, ethical guidelines, responsible development. Right. It's not about, like, stopping innovation. Right. Exactly. You know? It's about making sure that, that we're using it for good, mm -hmm. not just for, you know, making money. Yeah, that's a good distinction. And, and it's not just about uh, preventing bad stuff from happening. Right. It's about making sure, like, that the benefits are shared. Equitably making sure everyone gets a piece of the pie. Exactly. We've, we've seen what happens when tech, you know, makes inequality worse. Oh yeah. Plenty of examples of that. We've got to be really careful about that as we as we move forward with AI. Yeah. Awareness is key. So, okay, what does all this mean for for you listening right now? Gemini 2.0. It's more than just another like fancy gadget. It's a big deal. Yeah. It has the potential to really change the world. For better or worse. Yeah, no pressure. So the articles we've been talking about, you know, they focused on what Gemini can do. Right, the capabilities. But the the real question, the, the thing you should be thinking about is, is what should it be allowed to do? Where do we draw the line? That's that's the real deep dive here. Hmm. The ethics of this tech, the the impact on society, it's it's huge. Yeah, and it's not something that, you know, debt companies or politicians can figure out on their own. It's a conversation we all need to be having. Exactly. Because at the end of the day, the future of AI, it's not like some, you know, destiny that's already been decided. It's a story that we're writing. Yeah, and, mm -hmm. and we're writing it together, line by line, decision by decision. That's a good way to put it. So that brings us to the prototypes, right? Where Google is, you know, putting their money where their mouth is. Yeah, actually building this stuff, seeing how it works in the real world. Let's start with Project Astra, your personal AI assistant. But like on steroids, multilingual, uses tools like a pro and response times that, that would make a cheetah jealous. Yeah, Astra's ability to understand and respond to natural language, it's, it's remarkable. It's almost yeah. like talking to another person. Which is kind of, you know, the goal, I guess. Yeah, but it also makes you wonder, you know, are we are we ready for that? Yeah, it's a good question. What does it mean for our privacy, our autonomy? Okay, so next up we have Project Mariner, which is like your AI co-pilot for the internet. Surfing the web with AI by your side. It analyzes your screen, helps you navigate websites, yeah. even does tasks for you. And it has an 83.5% success rate on on some really tough benchmarks. Yeah, which on the surface sounds pretty good. Yeah, it's impressive. But again, you know, what about that other 16.5%? Yeah, what's it messing up? Exactly. And how comfortable are we with that margin of error? Yeah, it's a good question. Especially as these systems, you know, get more and more powerful. Right, the stakes get higher. Exactly. Okay, and for all the coders out there listening, Get ready for Project Jules. This is like your AI-powered coding buddy. Your AI pair programmer. Jules works in the background, like 
fixing bugs, streamlining your code, just, you know, automating all that tedious stuff. Yeah, making the developer's life a little easier. So on the one hand, it sounds like a dream. Oh yeah, less bugs, more free time, what's not to like? But uh, what about the whole the whole job displacement thing? Right, the elephant in the room. Are we are we creating a future where where human programmers are are just obsolete? And if so, what does that mean for the economy? Yeah. For society. And if you want another AI dope deep dive, check this next video and ask yourself, how lucky are we to live in these AI dope times?